This is a sampling of the models that I'm sending you. They're all more or less traditional models. Some of them are newer, um, made by origami artists this century. Some go back uh, two or three hundred years. This is the little bird, sometimes called the crane or the happiness crane. Sometimes just the bird that flaps his wings when you pull his tail. There's another version of this that the wings don't flap, but especially with children, they, they tend to like the one that flaps. Uh, this is a very traditional model going back quite a few hundred years. I'm not sure exactly how many, but it goes way back. This is the little Yakasan. The Yakasan is a little Japanese servant. You can see his little face and his little kimono, little sleeves. And he's a nice, simple beginner project. That's why I chose him. This is another quite traditional ba uh, model, the goldfish. And the goldfish is made from another model, which is the Celestial General's party hat. Um, you can use it either way, as a party hat or as a goldfish. The difference being that you convert it by making a couple of snips in the back and making the tail come out. Uh, this is a newer one. This is the candle. I always like this one because it actually has a little flame and everything for it. Uh, safe to put on Christmas trees or whatever you want to do with it. A pig. I'm not sure how old this one is. It is traditional, but I'm not sure it goes back as much as a hundred years. It's a side view of a pig, of course. The pig has a curly tail on this end, his little nose on that end, and his little legs. There's something else you can make with this. It looks very much like a Aztec sun if you just straighten this out and you make enough of them and you stack them up in a round circle. They make a really nice sun figure. It's the pig. Um, this is the star box, which is actually the shape of a little pyramid. If you look at it. But it's also very traditional and it's a beginner's project and it's kind of magic at the end when you suddenly pop it open. So it's a nice one to do with kids and a good beginner. Good one for beginners. This is the pendant. This has many different variations too. I make the pendant because this can also be um, one side of a six-sided um, kusadama or medicine ball which would attach. And it's very nice when you do that but sometimes you don't quite have time to make six of them with everybody and this is also a nice one for kids because they love to be able to hang something around their neck when they're done. This is a more recent one. Um, it's um, a Nautilus shell and it's not difficult to do at all. It's, uh, this is the only one here that doesn't start from a square. Well it does in a way but you have to cut the square in half before you start on the folding. But uh, the Nautilus shell is a good easy one for beginners. Okay, first um, I wanted to say that uh, all of these projects do take some attention to detail and um, especially sharp creases and accuracy, as much accuracy as you can give it. I should tell the kids you have to be a forgiving perfectionist when you when you fold. You know, just sort of try for the best you can do and forgive yourself when you don't succeed because you won't be perfect. Even the paper isn't perfectly square. So first thing I'm going to do uh, is the bird. The, uh, the flapping bird, the crane, happiness bird, happiness crane, whatever you want to call it. It's got a lot of names. It's the one that uh, in one form or another was uh, featured in the book um, Sadaka and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Um, I'm not sure that hers flapped. She pulled the tail. But um, it's basic, basically the same bird. Uh, she made uh, a thousand of them. She wanted to make a thousand of them just after um, the bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki. Story goes she didn't quite finish the thousand so her friends got together and helped her with it after she uh, she passed away. And now every year 
from what I understand, school children from all over the world send these little birds to Japan, kind of in memory of Sadaka. They say if you make a thousand of them, whatever you wish. The second one I'm going to show you is a Starbucks, a little pyramid-shaped Starbucks. Um, it starts very similarly to the happiness crane or the bird, with uh, the first four folds, one valley fold, two valley folds, three valley folds, and one for the mountain fold. Sharp creases, don't forget the sharp creases. Okay, again, you're making the preliminary base. Mountain fold is going hand to hand. Pop the center, sides pop up. Pinch them, bring them together in the center, grab it on the outside. That's the preliminary base again. Okay, now, this is also like the bird. You go to the open edge, top wing, and you make a swivel fold, like, again, like you're making the nose of a paper airplane. Swivel fold. Okay, whatever you do to this side, you do to this side. Again, another swivel fold. Do not go over the center crease line. I mean is don't go past that center point in the base. Turn it over on the back, do the same thing. Open, open edge of the wing on the center crease line, but not over the center crease line. Okay. And again, we have the kite base upside down. Okay, this time, we're going to put it flat in front of us. Lift just one wing up on one side, just straight up like that. Flat, straight up. Go to the open edge. Open it up with your finger. Squash it flat. And as you squash it flat, you want to see the little crease line in the center line up with the crease line going all the way up. Okay, same thing on this side. Lift the wing straight in the air. Open it all the way up. Squash it flat so that the lines, the crease lines line up. Crease line in the center right there lines up with the crease going all the way up. Okay, turn it over in the back, do the same thing. Lift the wing, open it, squash it flat, line up the creases. When you're done with this, you'll have something that looks very much like Chrysler symbol. Very similar. Okay. This bottom part forms a little triangle from this this point to this point. You're going to fold up and make a crease. This is not a hinge like the bird is, however. You're not making a hinge here. You're making a nice sharp crease, as sharp as you can get it. The paper is a little bit thick. When you finish making the crease on this, turn it over on the back and make the crease there too. You want this little bottom triangle to be flexible. You want that crease to be as sharp as you can get it, and that's got to be flexible. That's the base of the Starbucks right there. 